what's happening, guys. You know, in the past, we have talked about these little guys, rectifier or signal diodes, and we talked about how they are a one-way valve for electrons from the anode to the cathode. But I mentioned in one of the videos how if you go over a certain voltage, they'll break down and will start conducting in the opposite direction. Well, there is another type of diode called the Zener diode, which is designed to do that specifically. Now, the Zener diode is made exactly like a regular diode. It just uses some extensive uh, doping at the PN junction. But it is engineered to have a specific reverse breakdown voltage. That's called the Zener voltage. And, oh, hey, you can't even see that, can you? Zener diodes are available from 2 volts to about 200 volts. And when you backfeed them, reverse bias them, bring the current in through the cathode and pass it out through the anode, when you reach that Zener voltage, in this case, this is a 5 volt Zener, when you start getting above 5 volts, this will conduct in the opposite direction, but only about 5 volts. So it is able to act like a voltage sensitive switch. S W I T C H switch. There you go. I are educated. <laughs> Zener diodes are incredibly useful. One of the main things that they're used for is to create um, a simple voltage regulator. Now, yes, they are very lossy and they are going to convert a lot of power to heat, but they're incredibly simple to use. So if this is our positive rail and this is our negative rail, and we'll call this R1, and we'll call this guy our Zener diode, which the symbol looks just like a regular diode, except it's got a little there and a little there. That's our Zener diode, D1, and then from this little divider junction here, we'll come over here, and we'll put another resistor in, and we'll call that RL, our load resistor and we'll get our V out right there. So we have V in, zero volts, and V out. And that will make a simple a voltage regulator. And there are some calculations that you can do. So let's go over those real quick. First, let's talk about the constants and variables we'll be using. The first one is IL, which is our load current and then we have IZ which is our Zener current then we just have plain old I which is the current through R1 we have VZ which is our Zener voltage and we have PZ which is our Zener power. So if we put all of those together, we can do some simple calculations. And we can say that our Zener power, PZ, is equal to our Zener voltage times our maximum load current. All right? Our Zener current is equal to our Zener power divided by our Zener voltage. And finally, R1 will be equal to Vn minus what? What's the minus? Our Zener voltage divided by the current. And those three little simple calculations there will give you everything you need 
to do your own little zener circuit. So let's whip one up real quick like. All right, there's our voltage regulator circuit that I drew up for you. There's our resistor coming in, our zener, which is reverse bias to ground over here to our load resistor, and that's going out to the meter. And I don't know how well you can see that. We're putting in 12 volts, and we're getting 4.8. And if I take it down, there's 9 volts. And you can see we're still holding pretty steady, 4.6. So the Zener will regulate the voltage with no trouble. Very cool. Another easy and common use of the Zener is as a waveform clipper. So I am feeding in a 10 kilohertz, 10 volt peak to peak sine wave right here, passing it through that resistor and our reverse bias Zener and picking it up here. So if we take a look at the oscilloscope, Pardon the bumpiness while I adjust here so we can see what we're doing. The yellow sine waves, channel one, is the uh, input wave. The blue wave on channel two is the clipped wave. So you can see how the zener has clipped off the bottom of the wave. If we were to put two zeners together, cathode to cathode we could clip the bottom and the top of the wave and that's kind of a uh, poor man's way of turning a sine wave into a square wave kind of like a uh, pseudo analog to digital converter there are a lot more uses for the zener diode these are just a couple of them and that's just an introduction we've only touched on the very basics, but zeners are an incredibly useful component in many circuits, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up, feel free to comment, share, don't forget to subscribe, and a big thanks as always to all of my patrons. If you're not a patron, please consider going to the page and pledging a buck a month to help keep the channel alive. That's it. I'm out. Peace.